Hi there, thank you for joining the talk. My name is Brian and today I would like to share a framework that allows e-commerce or marketing practitioners to evaluate different experiment designs for personalization strategies. Here when I talk about experiments, I'm referring to online control experiments, A-B testing being a prime example. And when I talk about personalization strategies, I'm referring to a complex chain of interactions between let's say you representing an organization and each and every different individuals who might have different needs and wants. In a marketing perspective, a personalization strategy can be the scheduling of let's say when the next push message is going out to users phones, the budgeting or bidding of advertisements on your favorite social media platform, or perhaps even the ordering of different emails containing different promos to be sent out. Now these activities are usually directed at a particular user or a small group of users based on their purchase history or perhaps their past browsing behavior. We see there are two challenges when one starts to uh, design experiments for personalization strategies. The first one being that personalization strategies, each of them is only applicable to a small fraction of the user base. That is good news for the users because their experience is personalized. But from an experimentation perspective, that often leads to a low sample size and test power, and that is a bad thing. The second, perhaps larger problem is that users in personalization strategy experiments are not randomly assigned a priority. Unlike a simple A-B test for UI elements where you randomly split a user base into two and show them two different UI designs and see which one performed better, these users qualify first into the groups, perhaps by their actions, perhaps by their attributes. And as a result, the groups that formed are not statistically equivalent and it's very hard to compare between them directly. Now, there are quite a number of techniques that were developed in the past, I don't know how many years, uh, that tries to address these two issues. Uh, control variates and stratification are two of them that I can think of right now. However, we argue these techniques are quite ad hoc and hence would not scale with personalization strategy experiments. Imagine having a new personalization strategy. Chances are that you will need a new strata or ad hoc control variate in order to make the techniques I've mentioned work. And that would not help scale your operations to thousands of experiments required for modern large organizations. And hence what we argue is that one should focus on the setup. That is the assignment of users from the strategies they qualify for to the treatment analysis groups. Now, there are no ad hoc strata or control variates involved and experimentation frameworks should be able to switch between different setups if you set it up as a template fairly quickly. Now, experiment setups are not a totally new concept. There are many examples that exist. However, we feel there's a lack of way, a lack of systematic way to compare competing setups and see which one performed better under a particular circumstance. So that is what we set out to do. We uh, created a, an evaluation framework for personalization strategy experiments. And in the next five minutes or so, I'm going to give an overview on the framework. Recall that we want to design an experiment for two different strategies. In this case, we call them strategy one and strategy two. As users qualify themselves into these two strategies, they will form four distinct groups. There'll be those that qualify for neither strategy, those that qualify for only strategy one, those that qualify for only strategy two, and those that qualify for both strategies at the same time. Now, I think it's reasonable to assume that these four groups of users will behave slightly differently. They will have different metric means or variants to people in another group. Where for those who qualify for at least one strategy, we also assume that they will exhibit a different behavior in the case where they receive no treatment, that is if they're in the control group, and the case where they receive some sort of treatment, in the case maybe advertisements, under the respective strategies. It's also worth calling out that people in the middle group, uh, those who qualify for both strategies at the same time, will react differently to ads under strategy one and ads under strategy two. They don't get to see 
both of them at the same time, or else things will get very messy. And this results in eight different behaviors for experiment for two strategies. Now, this is important because um, an experiment setup is essentially mapping and weighting these eight different uh, behaviors. And what we want to see is if there's a treatment, what kind of setup stands the highest chance to see such effect? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce four common experiment setups of various sophistication. The first one concerns those that are in the intersection, those uh, that qualify for both strategies at the same time. So we randomly split them into two halves. For the first half, we give them ads under strategy one. And for the second half, we give them ads under strategy two. And everyone else don't get to see anything. The second setup, also quite simple in nature, concerns all users, regardless of whether they qualify for any strategy or not. So what we'll do is we slice the entire population randomly into two halves. And for the first half, we give ads under strategy one to those who qualify for strategy one. And for the second half, we give ads for under strategy two for those who qualify for strategy two. If you're in the wrong half strategy combination, you don't get to see anything. The third setup is quite similar to the second setup, with the only difference being that we only analyze uh, the activities of users that qualify for at least one strategy. Everything else is roughly the same. By doing so, by excluding users that who do not qualify for any of the strategies, we are avoiding something called metric dilution. Usually that is a good thing, but in our paper we, uh, we show under some particular circumstances, this may not be a good idea. Finally, we have our geo control and multi-cell setup. The key idea of that is each strategy will get their own control group to calculate their own incrementalities. And at the end, we're comparing the strategies by comparing the incrementality of each individual strategy. More specifically, we slice the entire population into two random halves. And then for the first half, we focus on those who qualify for strategy one. We create a control group and a treatment group to calculate the incrementality of the first strategy. Likewise, for the second half, we create a control group and a treatment group for those who qualify for the second strategy in order to obtain its incrementality. And at the end, we compare the incrementalities between strategy one and strategy two and see which strategy has a better performance. Now, having the setups defined, we have to ask ourselves uh, the question, what is the evaluation criteria? Or what makes a setup actually better? Now, there are a lot of different considerations one has to make when they compare different setups. There's technical consideration, for example, whether your experimentation framework can split users like you want it to. There's business consideration, such as um, whether your stakeholders want individual incrementality figures. Here, we're more interested in the statistical expert, that is, which setup stands the highest chance to see a effect if there's one. To do this, we need two quantities. We need the actual effect size as presented by the setups, as well as the minimum detectable effect of the experiment design. Now we say a setup is superior to another setup if the superior setup yields a larger actual effect and have a lower minimum detectable effect size. Now that is the ideal case, and usually it's more trade-off because the setup usually comes with a larger actual effect and a larger MD size. So what we say is a compromise condition saying that a setup is still superior if the gain in the actual effect is greater than the loss in sensitivity. In other words, the gain in MDE, because in this case, the superior setup still stands a higher chance to detect an effect if there's one. I like to talk more about the evaluation framework. However, it's just simply impossible to fit everything into a 10 minute video. So I invite you to read the paper where we share some real thumbs derived from the framework. We'll ask questions like if metric dilution is always bad, and when is the geo control setup better than perhaps other simpler setups? I also invite you to come to the Q&A sessions if you have any questions, or even if you have any comments so that we can balance ideas. In any case, thank you very much for your time and I hope to see you soon.